Speaker, it's a great honor for me to speak on Bill 65 in this third reading debate um, as the member of provincial parliament for Ottawa Centre. Uh, speaker, there's that perspective. Uh, from my, the perspective that I have uh, uh, learned and, um, and appreciated from my community is that I want to present today. But before I do that, I do also want to compliment uh, the Minister of Transportation, the member from, from Vaughan, uh, for, for bringing this very important uh, initiative. He is right. As soon as he was sworn in as the, the, the Minister of Transportation, I, uh, I had the opportunity to sit down with him and talk about some of the concerns um, around my community, around people speeding in neighborhoods, uh, streets, in a downtown community that I represent, uh, to talk about our school zones and how, uh, and speak to instances that I have heard from mom and, uh, moms and dads um, in my uh, community directly. He was attentive. Uh, he was a thoughtful uh, speaker and right away our conversation went to possible solutions uh, that are available and it was a few conversations like that that we had together um, along eight, with aided by his, uh, his staff where we start talking about different options and solutions uh, that, are, that are available uh, to ensure that our communities and particularly our municipalities that have the tools available to them, have the, the suite of options available uh, to them uh, to make our streets safe. I think we both agree right from the get-go for, that for, for any type of measure to be successful, we have to empower local communities. We have to really give the tools to our municipalities as opposed to bringing sort of a heavy hand from the province because, Speaker, each community is different. Each municipality is different. This is a, this is a, a, this is a diverse uh, province, uh, Speaker, and it's, it's important that we respect that diversity and ensure that we give municipalities equally the powers so that they can then decide what works uh, best uh, for them. And I think what you see here, Speaker, is a, a tremendous amount of work that has been done by the Minister of Transportation, who's the member of Avon and his, his ministry, uh, with some really practical uh, uh, solutions, uh, result of uh, uh, significant consultations before even the bill was presented with municipalities and, and, uh, and Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, um, uh, that, is, that is present here. Um, speaker, as I said here I, uh, earlier that I, my aim is to bring the perspective of my community that I, I have the great privilege of representing. As I have said before in this, in this house, one of the great uh, joys I have as the MPP for Ottawa Centre is to knock on doors every weekend on Saturdays in my community. Um, that allows me to have regular conversations with my constituents on matters that are important to them. And one of the issues that I continue to hear, one of the issues that I used to hear a lot about, um, is, is the concerns around people speeding in residential neighborhoods. We're not talking about main, um, main thoroughfares, we're talking about residential streets. I have the great uh, privilege of representing downtown Ottawa uh, with some incredible uh, neighborhoods. They're densely populated. We're, we're seeing a fair bit of intensification taking place. More and more people are choosing to live in vibrant neighborhoods like the Glebe and the West Bro or uh, Carlton Heights, Old Ottawa South, um, which are located in, in my writing, um, to just name a few. And what we're finding is that young families are moving in and enjoy the downtown living. Uh, you've also attract a lot of traffic, especially uh, people going to work, and we see people uh, speeding. And the question becomes, uh, well, what can you what can you do to to uh, to slow people down? We have seen uh, parents and community associations taking up activities like drive slow campaigns. I think we see a lot across the province uh, where they've made their own signs. In our case, in Ottawa, the city of Ottawa, actually through the um, uh, public health office, became part of that as well to again remind drivers in residential streets around school zones that uh, you know there's lives at risk. We've got young children who we encourage to walk to school or, or use their bikes, and we it is is up to us um, to protect them. Um, we have seniors uh, who are you know are more active now and, and out there in, in, in the communities, we need to protect them. So a speaker was in the last election in 2014, I made a commitment to my community that if I am uh, pri privileged enough to be re-elected on their behalf, that uh, reducing speed limits in residential streets from 50 kilometers an hour to something less, like 40 or 30, is something that I'm going to advocate on their behalf. And on, uh, that was one of the mandate, important mandate that was given to me by my, by my community. And I'm really proud, Speaker, that here we are on third reading uh, of Bill 65 uh, with measures like giving municipalities 
municipality is the power to be able to reduce speed limits on residential streets from 50 kilometers an hour to 40 or 30 is, is part of this. The fact that, Speaker, that we've got uh, photo radar as a tool for school zones and community safety zones is part of this initiative and that we are making it easy for municipalities to use red light cameras also to make intersections uh, safe. Um, all these three measures, uh, Speaker, I can tell you are uh, very much uh, supported by my community. Since the bill was tabled, I have been constantly um, uh, community, uh, communicating with my constituents, uh, letting them know um, uh, every step of the way, the process that is undertaken. And I can tell you, Speaker, I continue to get more and more encouragement and more and more support uh, for Bill 65. In fact, the questions I, I get often is how quickly this bill can pass, how quickly that, that community associations and our residents could start working with the city of Ottawa so that they can have their neighborhoods declared as uh, uh, neighborhoods with lower uh, speed limits. Speaker, I'm also quite encouraged to note that the city of Ottawa, with the support of our Mayor Jim Watson, um, is also very supportive of Bill 65. In fact, I had the great opportunity to work with the city of Ottawa um, in, in bringing forward a motion um, um, at the city council asking the province to exactly take these, uh, these measures, both in terms of the power to reduce speed limits on residential streets, uh, but also to be able to uh, have photo radars in school zones and community safety zones. And, and so we actually have a motion passed by City of Ottawa uh, City Council uh, that was sent uh, to the government, both to the Premier and to the Minister of Transportation. I believe I was copied on that correspondence asking to do the same. And they have remained steadfast in their support for Bill 65. In fact, uh, Speaker, members who are, were on the committee would recall uh, we had six city councillors from Ottawa who presented, uh, some of them in person right here uh, at Queen's Park and, and the others uh, through, uh, through uh, teleconference. Um, and all six of them uh, expressed their strong support uh, for for this uh, this bill, um, and were able to quite um, uh, eloquently, of course, answer the questions that was put forward uh, uh, by the members of the committee. I want to speaker um, thank them, uh, councillors uh, Riley Brockington, Keith Aglai, Jeff Leeper, Catherine McKenney, Toby Nussbaum, and Matthew Fleury for the work they do they do at home in our community. In, in Ottawa and for taking the time for either coming down to Queen's Park or presenting by, by telephone on this very important uh, measure. They were all were kind uh, enough to give me some credit, uh, but it's a partnership under which we work uh, together to represent, um, to, uh, represent our res uh, residents. But I, Speaker, I, I highlight that just so that members know that a municipality like, like Ottawa, which is the second largest municipality in the province, is very much supportive of this bill. In fact, in anticipation of this le legislation being passed by, uh, by this uh, House, uh, the city has, uh, in Ottawa has already started working on their policy guidelines on how to declare uh, certain residential streets uh, around 30 kilometers an hour. So they've actually started doing their side of the work uh, in hopes that this bill will pass into law so that they can immediately, once it comes into force, can start doing the work necessary to make our neighborhood streets um, streets uh, even even safer. So, um, Speaker, I, I just wanted to uh, raise that point. I also want to uh, again make sure to thank members of my community, members from community associations, individual parents who came to see me, or uh, people that I met at the uh, doors. People like um, Donna Shirali and and Catherine uh, uh, Catherine uh, uh, McGinty James. Uh, members of community associations from Wellington Village Community Association, the Glebe Community Association, the, uh, the Carlington Community Association, again, just to name a few, on and on and on. And they all speaker, uh, all speaker very much uh, wholeheartedly supported this, uh, uh, support this legislation and again have been uh, inquiring as to when this bill will pass into law. One of the other things, speaker, I can tell you my constituents um, my residents are uh, very clear about that none of these measures amount to a cash grab. Um, speaker, um, their point is very clear, and I wholeheartedly agree that uh, following the law um, is what we are supposed to do. That's why we create the laws. And if you break the law, there has to be consequences attached to it. So if you are 
breaking the speed limit in a school zone and then you get caught by a photo radar while speaker by no stretch of the uh, imagination or definition that is a cash grab well guess what you broke the law and the best way not to pay that fine is not to break the law so uh, speaker, I think I just want to make that point very, very clear that this is not a cash grab. This is uh, tools in the toolkit for municipalities to make sure that they continue to keep their school zones, their community zones, and their residential streets uh, safe. Um, and if somebody is going to break the law, then they have to face the consequences. And speaker, in this instance, breaking the law could mean uh, losing the life of a child or an elderly person in a community. And that's something, as, as members of this, this legislature, should be absolutely unacceptable to us. So, Speaker, um, in conclusion, I just want to uh, see that I, say that I'm very excited that we are at a point where this bill is up for third reading. I want to thank the minister. Uh, I want to thank other members in this House who have been supporting this, uh, this bill. This is a step in the right direction in making sure that we are making our neighborhoods uh, safe. Um, I can tell you that my community of Ottawa Center uh, uh, thanks uh, this legislature and the government for bringing this important measure. This is going to make a marked difference in my community around our, our schools and our neighborhood streets. And I just cannot wait, Speaker, uh, to share the good news. I hope uh, that the third reading will be uh, a re uh, will, won't take too long, so we can pass this bill uh, and get on with the move uh, uh, with the steps to implement this week, uh, uh, bill through MTO. Because it we cannot come to the day uh, sooner, Speaker, where we make our schools and our residential streets uh, safe. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, for the time.